this or C would be the most likely reactions of the previous incumbents, banks, the leaders, and so forth? Um, well, I've done a talk about that. It's called the five stages of grief. It starts with denial. Uh, denial is when clearly this is silly technology that cannot possibly work and Bitcoin will be dead soon. That lasted for the first three years of Bitcoin. Then it switches to anger. This is not correct. It must be stopped. Make it illegal. Ban it. Only criminals use it. It must be stopped. Um, that lasted for about a year. That didn't work either. Then we went to the third stage of grief, which is bargaining. Hey, yeah, Bitcoin is not that interesting. Blockchains are really interesting. How about we do blockchains without any of the things that Bitcoin does? Maybe we can keep all of the control, power, centralization, and do blockchains, and that way we won't be disrupted. That's been since the middle of 2014 until today. That's not going to work. Uh, the most interesting things that Bitcoin does is because it's open and decentralized, uncensorable, immutable, and unforgeable. Um, you can get some advantages with blockchains, but you can't get all of those advantages. And then we're going to go to depression. Oh, <laughs> but we had such a good run for two centuries. Why is everyone taking away our business now? Why do young people not want to bank Monday to Friday, nine to five, with high fees? Why do they want all of these cryptocurrencies instead, that work 24 hours a day? It's unfair. And finally, acceptance. At which point, I'm hoping that the banking industry will find that if you want to reach customers, if you want to make this an economy, not of the two or three billion of the most privileged financial people, but you want to make it one global, seven and a half billion included human beings, Bitcoin is a solution, not a problem. It's a promise, not a threat. And then we all win. <laughs> <laughs>